us. We'll pray, make sure we're in fellowship, uh, and then we'll begin today's uh, lesson for John 9 if we confess our sins. The idea, uh, make sure that uh, the Holy Spirit is going to help us. So that's what we're asking for, that he might lead us, keep us, be able to see what's there, and then how do we apply it in our lives is what we'll be looking at today. So take a few moments in the privacy of your own priesthood, and then we'll begin today's lesson. Father, we come before you, give you thanks for this time you've given us that we may be able to uh, uh, be able to understand and apply properly, rightly dividing the word of truth, and that we could be able to apply it properly. Father, we pray for your Holy Spirit to enlighten us and be clear to us so that you may be glorified by the things we say, think, and do. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So here we have this, uh, this list that I, I have put together. And it basically says that if I'm going to apply something that I'm saying is from the Bible, then it's got to be biblical, first of all, right? It's got to come from the Bible. Can't, I can't just take football and say, okay, now I'm going to apply it in a biblical way. No, I've got to find it in the Bible somewhere. And, and, and not just grab any passage, but actually make sure that we whatever we're applying comes from a part of the Bible. And, and that that's found in context. So it's... Uh, you properly observe what's there, and then you properly interpret what was there, and that's what we've done in uh, first uh, for this uh, passages that we've been looking at, Second Timothy three sixteen and seventeen. We've looked at the context, and then it has to be in harmony with the general teaching of the Bible. It can't be, you know, some people have taken certain passages, and then they say, well, okay, I, I, I believe this, and yeah, you, you can read it. And you can get that interpretation out of it, but it may not be in harmony with someplace, another passage. James, when he says, you know, faith without works is dead. So therefore, you take that, what he has, and he's talking, and you apply it to salvation. Well, then, then you have a problem, right? So that's what we said. We have to, has to be consistent. Paul teaches is apart from works. Timothy, I mean, uh, James cannot be talking about salvation. Maybe talking about something else, but it's not talking about salvation because we see it clearly in the scripture. It is apart from work, salvation, period, over and over. It, it repeats it several times. So we have to up, make that passage uh, that passage consistent. So then the other thing is to, uh, it has to be personal. When I say let's apply the Bible, it should be said, well, yeah, that neighbor across the street or my brother over here, you know, he should be listening or taking this passage. And, and that, a lot of times that's what people do. They, they generalize, oh, yeah, all, you know, because they could see it over there. It should be taken to you. What do you, you're going to do with this passage? Uh, and uh, try not to just generalize. I'm going to be good. Okay. <laughs> what this passage has some specific items that are being said, and that's what you need to apply. And then you have to be specific, as I said. It needs to know know the audience and identify with them. In other words, take take what's in the scripture and then identify what what was going on at the time, and then identify it to yourself. How do I fit in that audience? Okay. Uh, and then when you're when you're putting an application, talk about a specific place, a specific plan, what time, and then in what ways you're going to do this. And then what people you're going to apply this to. Those are, those, that's how you apply a, script, a scripture. Now, I'm going to give you an example so that way you can see what I did with this passage for myself. So that way you can kind of get an idea uh, what, that, what that's about. So, <clears throat> we see number, uh, number five, the process of applying the word. Okay, so we're going to be looking at that. And we're going to talk about, in summary, uh, A, first of all, know the correct interpretation of the text. That's the first part, and we, well, I think we've done enough work in the 2 Timothy 3, 16, 17 to say, we, we, we understand what's there. And then we know how, uh, and then try to find biblical principles that are expressed. And then, and then when you do it, you say, I must do this, or I must, we must do this. In other words, this is, 
you, you take that passage, that, that, that application, and say, like he, uh, Paul told Timothy, you know, uh, you know, teach this to other, to other faithful men. Well, then you would say, well, who's my faithful man? I'm going to go ahead and, 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 and do something about that. Or if I can't do it, then I'll support someone that does it. You know, it doesn't mean that, doesn't mean that I have to do everything, but it, I could say, well, I know this outfit and this missionary or this mission task, they're, they're doing this, so I'll support that because that's how I'm, uh, I'm applying this, this particular uh, passage. And then we see C, we're going to be looking at the, uh, think about how this principle applies to your own life, always. Uh, you know, every, every passage in the scripture has something that can be drawn out. So the closer, the more, what I'm going to say, more precise you are in the interpretation of what's there, the more precise you can be in how you should apply, how correctly you can apply it, okay? Uh, and then reflect on uh, uh, in the action plan, when we talk about that, we reflect on different areas of your life, whether we're talking about work, family, church, neighbors, uh, uh, individuals, uh, that you're going to apply. Look for application specific to your life and not superficial. Not just say, well, yeah, I'm going to be better or I'm going to be a good person or I'm going to give more. But, you know, what do you mean by give more? Uh, more time, more effort, more, you know, and the specific. And then develop an action plan uh, to implement that principle. In other words, you say, well, I'm going to do this specific thing and it's going to take me some time, but I'm going to accomplish this before the end of the year or something in that order. Be specific in that. And then, uh, uh, and in that sense, make that plan. And then establish measurable and concrete. Because a lot of times we could say, yeah, you know, you know a lot of people have the, their, uh, their uh, uh, New Year's uh, resolution and then they don't put real goals in there. In other words, I'm going to lose weight. Well, okay, well, what do you mean lose weight? You can lose one pound? Okay, I did it. I'm done. Or are we talking about five pounds, eight pounds? And then how long is it going to take me to do it? You know, so that's what I mean by establish certain measures, uh, reasonable measures of how you're going to do it. And then start take the uh, concrete actions to achieve that objective. So those are kind of in summary what we're talking about doing. So let's take a look uh, how, I, how I did this using those seven great questions. So we see here uh, the who question, and that's, uh, I say, first of all, uh, you know, <clears throat> what does this passage teach me about God? You're going to take a look and says, what does it tell me? Anybody? Any idea? What does this passage tell me about God? Second, oh. so Second Timothy 3, three sixteen seventeen. yes. Teaches us that, that God was concerned, concerned enough that he wanted to give us some information and, okay. he, and he gave us the information. By gave us the inspiration through inspiration. Through inspiration. The idea is he, God breathed, God put it into, and so that, that's what it teaches me is about God. God is concerned and he says, and, and, he, and he put together this, this package that we call the scriptures. And then uh, we say, what does this passage teach me about the church? Is the church mentioned, mentioned in this passage at all? No. no. But. No, right? So you, that's an. If you teach other men and they okay. teach other okay, men. Okay, but that's in, the, that's in chapter 4. But in chapter 3, verse 16 and 17, we're kind of restricting what we're going to do with this passage here. And in this passage, it really doesn't say anything about the church. Doesn't say it. I mean, it. You know, we will we'll apply it to the church, but I'm saying it doesn't really teach teach or anything directly about the church. Same thing. What does this past teach past teach me about the world? Does it say anything about the cosmos, the world, mm -hmm. Satan? Not really. How, nothing. Okay. Good. And and those are those are legitimate. And then we say, what does this passage teach me about myself? Okay. You got anybody volunteer? To open up their their hearts to see. <clears throat> Teach me that I should use the scriptures for okay. admonition, correction, okay. reproof. So it it, it 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 and then how about the idea? It can it, it teaches me that 
I can be a man of God. That, that it is a possibility. It's not uh, a fine, it isn't fixed. It says I am a man of God, but it says I can't because it tells me it's useful for all these things so that the man of God. If, if we properly apply all of the scriptures, we will be a man of God. <laughs> yeah, well, well, this is it. How much of the scriptures before I become a man of God? Now remember, this is Timothy. Yeah. When it was written, Timothy, was he doing everything right? Or evidently, there was a couple issues, so it isn't that 100%. You know? I, I, I came up with, this, I mean, that same issue with people that come in and they tell me, you know, like they came in to my house and they said, yeah, you, you know, I tell them, well, what's it take to be saved? And they said, well, you got to apply the word of God. You got to be, you know, I said, well, how much of it? Yeah. I mean, is that, do I have to do 10%? Do I do five steps? Ooh. So if you if you put it that way, then you never get there. Right. But evidently, Timothy is already called in chapter one. We saw he's called a man of God, and yet he told him about some of the things he needs to fix or continue to do. So what I'm saying is that there is a possibility. But uh, you know, am I a man of God? Well, am I, if I'm applying everything that the Scripture teaches me to the point where I'm properly prepared to do all the good works then I'm doing good works and therefore according to the scriptures and therefore I can be a man of God and then and that's where that's where we have to go in and says uh, and then and then we sit here it says teach me about me it says well myself I th I think this passage is the same there is a goal for me become a man of God and do what a man of God does okay and then what kind of person should I be or not be according uh, with this passage that's there. And here's what I came up with. Need to be a believer. Okay, I've got to be a believer, to first of all. They've got to be saved. Have to study the Word. Okay, got to study the Word. Mm -hmm. But, I, you know, I'm saying with this scripture, you know, I, I looked at it and it says, I must be a man of God. I must have the righteousness of God as standard and change my thoughts that are not in in agreement uh, with his righteousness and his and my actions to go along with that. See what I'm saying? I take this passage and now I took I took it and took it out of took it out of there and says, okay, what I'm going to do with it? In other words, here, what, what kind of person should I be? I should be a person that takes the word of God and to become thoroughly equipped and do all of the good works that God wants me to do. That's that's what I get out of this passage. Personal now, right? And that's each one of you, you know, you, you would have to look at that passage and say, you know, that's what I'm doing. I think you were mentioning the same thing, study. And, and so that's how I get there. But ultimately what my goal is, is to be a man of God that that actually performs all the good works according, uh, according to what the scripture says. Okay, so now, so that that that's the who who now instead of them or he or she is me <laughs> that ultimately that's how you you transfer it out of there and then bring it to me right that's who uh, um, what we, we have to understand and again there's some places that are limits there are limits to certain things certain passages that I said you know I can't meet that I'm not going to be there like when Jesus says to his disciples ask whatever you wish and then I will give it to you. Okay, does that, <laughs> am I going to put myself in that passage and say, well, that means that all I got to do is ask God, he's going to give it. Well, mm -hmm. I have to look at context, you know, kind of a thing. So that's, or that uh, when, when, when he tells his disciples, uh, don't worry about what you're going to say. And the Holy Spirit will give you what you need to say when you're in front of these people. I'm saying, well, okay. Does that really apply to me? It says, don't, you know, in other words, don't know nothing about the Bible, and then God will just open up my brain and, and just no. let, come out with my mouth. No. So you, you follow what I'm saying. It's we we have to take passages and say, okay, in that passage where Jesus is saying to his disciples, don't worry, I'll, the Holy Spirit will remind you of what I told you, and then you will know, and all that. So I'm saying he's talking to them. I'm not, I'm not going to get the direct uh, revelation as what these guys did. 
I may, I can get illumination from the Holy Spirit. That's another passage that he will teach us and things of that type. But that's what I'm trying to say. So here the next says, what should I, in uh, number 95, it's the next one. Says, uh, how? Okay. How? So we're looking for action or some activity. So what action should or should I not take. Remember, there's some negative examples in the passage. I'm saying, I'm not going to be like that. <laughs> so, you know, so we can learn from that. But in this case, he says, uh, what action should I or should I not take? In this case, what do you think we should do based on these two verses? Study first. Okay, I have to study. And then in, in this case, I'm saying, uh, like for myself, I'm a teacher. So I, I would take that passage that says what I'm supposed to do is train others how to live Christian life. Clearly, by teaching, rebuking, and correcting using the scriptures. That's what I need to do. So maybe you might say, well, I don't teach. In a, but I'll, 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 I, my, my grandchildren, my, if I give counsel, if I do anything like that, I'm going to use the scriptures. To help rebuke or change. You're or always teach. teaching somebody. Somebody, exactly. So there, and that's what this this says. Now it isn't just that just somebody. We're going to see that when I get down to specifics, who I'm going to do this to, and things that I take. So we we say you know I must teach. I just must train. So and then what mission should I I support or start? In other words, there may be. Okay, I can't go to uh, uh, to uh, um, uh, some other other. I can't be a missionary. I can't go somewhere. But I mean, can I support somebody that does, and then find out what they're doing? Not just say, "Well, these guys are." Sounds like they're doing okay. They're they're doing nice things. But should I? When I you have to pick, you know, because your funds and your time are limited. So you want to put where the maximum effort or maximum uh, efficiency in, in what you do and who you select. Not just say, oh, I'm just going to give to cancer, I'm going to give to this, I'm going to give to all these places. And says, no, pick and then say, which one gives me more bang for the buck? Kind of with my time and effort. So that's kind of, so that's what I said. What mission said, should I support? Which one is God-centered? Right. And, and then again, I love, that's what I'm saying. You can turn around and say, so, uh, uh, in this case, uh, for example, you might say, well, I'm going to make sure I support the pastor going to those locations that are, and I, I'm going to do something, not just talk about it, but actually fill out the check or do something that, that, that carries that on. So that, that's how you would be doing this, right? Because you are helping a mission or some kind of, and support that. In this case, for me, what I did, I says, I'm going to prepare a hermeneutics workshop in a practical way. So that was my take from this 2 Timothy 3.16. I said, well, I, you know, I'm telling you, this is what I see in this scripture, in this passage, and then let me write something down, put it together, uh, and and then teach it to others. And I've done this, and you get out what different other places. I've even reduced it even more simpler, because sometimes some of these guys have, like, barely got out of high school or barely. So I, I try to give them at least some practical things that they can do even with limited resources and say, okay, that's that's what I prepare for them. Okay, so that's how. Now we go to the next one, which is uh, what? what? Well, in this case, we're looking for things and ideas. What ideal should I have or not have? What ideal? In other words, out of this passage, we're, we're, we're going to grab something that says, here's something that now should be a priority in my way of thinking about the scriptures. Because that's this passage. Is More respect. For the More scriptures. respect for the scriptures. Okay. Okay. And you? Anything? Well, I'm just thinking, taking all of the scriptures yep. more and more seriously in an application to my life. Okay. In this, in this, in this passage, it talks about all scripture right. is God-breathed. 
So, and then and at the end it says, so that it's sufficient to train, to do all good works. So I like those two words, all scripture and all good works. So they go together. So I, I said, look at scripture as sufficient source to teach. That means instruction, rebuke, refusion, uh, refutation of error, correction, repair, instruction and training, and rely less on my opinion. Rely less on just, uh, what I'm going to say, uh, comments or opinions from people. People say, well, I think that's a good thing, or, or you know, we should do this. I say, well, I'm going to rely. If, if you give me an opinion, that's fine. But if there's no scripture or something that you can show me that that's what I should hold, then it's just your opinion. You, you follow what I'm saying? You might, it might be a good opinion, but it has more worth if it's backed up by scripture. Why do you believe that way? Well, because I have these scriptures that tell me this is the way I'm supposed to believe. So you follow what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's the idea that I have is that now it's no longer just because my experience or or because of my pastor 10 years ago or a long time or a good old friend thought this way. That's why I believe or think that way. It's not enough anymore. It's It has to be more in the standard of scripture. If it's not there or maybe... Uh, I need to I need to repair maybe I've had some bad opinions or things that I thought was right well now that I've investigated and said well I gotta change that <laughs> uh, at one time I remember in the gap theory I used to think that was it you know there was the angelic conflict that yeah then and, 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 and there was the uh, uh, the dinosaurs and everything were were Satan's pets and all of that I used to believe that I mean that was my way of a fitting science and and, and the Bible. In and then sense. you read some of John Whitcomb's work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Then, then I began, I read and understood more. I said, well, okay, well, that's kind of more, that's difficult. And then you brought up the idea, okay, well, if you got, <clears throat> if you tell me that God says on the seventh day uh, all was good, then oh, you look good. underneath all that ground, there's a bunch of cancer and dinosaur bones, death and everything, and you say, that was all good. Well, that, that doesn't fit. So what, that's what I'm saying. We, we need to always uh, uh, think in the sense of says, uh, I can I prepare myself and says, okay, I gotta agree with scripture. If God said all oh, was good and very good, I'm saying there's something wrong with me thinking that death and disease and everything buried under the ground had, was good to any good extent. So it, it causes, it, that's the kind of idea. That's what I'm saying. I'm gonna, uh, we should always have that ideal to say, I'm going to stick to what Scripture says. And then we see what doctrines were illustrated or defined in this passage. Inspiration of Scripture. Right. Okay. That's good. Okay. So here it says, uh, Paul insists that to, to all that the Word of God is all sufficient prepared to prepare a man of God. It therefore rejects the whole idea that God speaks today, apart from the scriptures, which is, which the scripture is without error. You know, if I'm, so when people say God told me, or uh, you know, I feel God telling telling me to do this or that, uh, I always say, or God told me to tell you. Yeah, oh yeah, exactly. You should go with this woman and get married to her because God said. You know, I say, well, <laughs> I, I. The, the whole idea we we should insist that it has to be if it's if it's something important that that I, decis, decisions and everything it should be based on something that's written scripture that's what we mm -hmm. said it's all graphe which means scripture what is in writing anything that people say and everything and I should not have that same level of, of uh, 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 weight in my in my thinking. So, we see now, the next question is why, right? It says, uh, the reason or result or purpose uh, that we get to, why should I, what should I or should I uh, do or believe, right? What, what should I do? What purpose in, in, has changed so in my the way? the man of God may be equipped for all good works. Okay. So, 
so I think you're 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 hitting it. The idea is I have to be prepared. In other words, create. In other words, go through the process of being fully prepared to do all good works, and that that's that's where we where it should be going on uh, every day. Not not just on Sunday, not just on Saturday or this you know uh, Bible study day, <laughs> but every day it should be something that should be a, in the front front part of my mind is so to, to become fully prepared for every good work that God has prepared for me to do so uh, so that's why I would study or you know to that to that extent so now we say well when time um, so when should I apply or what I've learned. In other words, all the say, time. Okay, well, that's a that's a good answer. <laughs> uh, in the sense that it's you know when you say all the time when I'm cooking or when I'm running when I'm going to the groceries. No, we're talking mm -hmm. about you use these thinking about the rules of interpretation Bible lesson. We should be using those all of the time. Any time that I'm because this is talking about getting prepared, and I know it's training. So then. It should be any time that I'm dedicated myself to do kind of training, putting that together. So I should be using these rules that uh, of Bible lessons and all the Bible lessons that I that I talk about, or whenever you, whenever you're going to be talking to someone, it should, you should be fully prepared for them. In other words, if you're talking to your uh, your son, your neighbor, and you're talking about divorce and how or living together, be prepared. Go to the scriptures, find out what this say, and then be able to explain to that individual why that's sin to live with that person, even though you know it'll cost you a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, you know, you bought a house, you got it all together, and you're still living with her. You know, well, that would cost me a lot because if I left and I lived apart, then I have to have another apartment, pay for all that. So the scripture doesn't bring that in; it brings in, is it sin or not? That's your, that's that's their decision. Of what to do, but that's just it. You should be fully prepared for whenever you do discuss uh, uh, these kind of issues with other. Well, I think there's there's certain instances where you have to depend on the Holy Spirit to convict that person of always, whether it's wrong. Always, yeah. the Holy Spirit is the one that convicts, Convicts. but He not. uses no, but He uses you through the Word because He uses the Word of God. He doesn't God. The Holy Spirit doesn't do it apart from the Word. And all you're doing is saying, I'm going to bring those word, that Word up to Him. And now the Holy Spirit has ammunition to work on that individual. It isn't me doing it. I mean, I, I can't force anybody or anything. I'll just say, well, here's what the Scripture says. What do you do with it is up to you. I remember teaching in a class in... Uh, and, and I forgot where... Yeah, it was in Nicaragua or when, where, you know, they were saying, well... Uh, what about uh, I'm in charge of uh, you know I have authority over men when I'm I'm the head of uh, of Sunday school. I said, well, okay, it's up to you. I, the scripture says a woman should not have authority over a man. In, in, in when I'm talking about within within the church. Now outside the church, you could be president, you could be vice, whatever you <laughs> dictator, whatever you are, that's fine. But in the church, that's what Paul is talking about. So I'm saying, and then she said, well, you know, well, yeah. I said, well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to tell you what the scripture says, what you do with it. And if you feel it's wrong or you understand it to be wrong, then it is sin. If you don't think it's sin and you can just, then that's up to you. That's between you and the Lord. I just give you what the scripture says. Okay. So that that's the kind of thing we're talking about. I, I don't believe that the Holy Spirit uses uh, osmosis <laughs> to control or change it. He uses scripture, and all you are is the hammer or the, the screwdriver that, that he's going to be able to use. But uh, that's a good point. So here it says, so when? So it says, using the rules whenever I prepare any lessons when I'm going to talk to someone about the scriptures. And then where? <clears throat> Again. Okay. The where is the place. Where should I apply uh, what you have learned. In other words, where should you, not me, I mean, I've got my own here and then here. How, where should you apply what you just learned about 
this passage? Joan, Jim? To friends. To friends, okay. To neighbors. Okay, so is there an individual that you can think of that you say, well, I, I know I need to talk to this person, and yet, then uh, how am I going to do that? So it's yes. kind of, that's, that's what I'm saying. Uh, like for me, I put, I will present the hermeneutics workshop at all the places that I work in the ministry. Every mission, every, I've gone to Panama, Nicaragua, I've gone to India. I've, you know, I've done these at these places. I've done a, 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 what I call a hermeneutics workshop. Now, after that, then there's other things that people want to know about uh, uh, Book of Revelation. They want to know what Daniel is talking about, what Matthew, Gospel. So uh, those also, but I'm using the word to, to do that. But when it comes to one of the first things is try to get them to understand is here's the interpretation goal. And then, then when you go to the next step of teaching them on the doctrine of dispensations and those They'll, they, you know, they, they'll be able to grab and say, yeah, he's taking it from Scripture and he's showing me there and, and makes sense. And that's why in this base of interpretation, and I agree with the pastor, that's that's so important. If you don't have that, then how are you going to go to the next step? Uh, so where, you know, for each one of you, that's, where, that's what I'm saying. How do you, you know, where are you going to do that? Now, for me, it was personal, and that's how I decided. And then, to the extent, that's the next point, number seven, is the quality or quantity of, uh, uh, of what I'm doing. It says, to what level should I apply what I have learned? So here, here's where, when, and that word all, to me, that's, that tells me how far. When people, I have no problem in telling people, uh, it says all scripture is, is inspired so it's all without air I don't care which one you're talking about I don't turn around and say well this part of scripture if it's spiritual that's fine it could be wrong in the historical side it could be wrong here or I'm saying the, the, the scripture says all oh, everything that was graphite is comes from God so you're telling me that he can make mistakes and it's okay no so I have to insist that it's all no 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 problem I, I don't have, I don't feel shame I don't uh, about, about saying all scripture. <clears throat> and then the other part it says, uh, to what level it says, insist that all scripture is useful. There's no part in the scripture that you say, well, it's, yeah, it's useless. Uh, I'm saying if it's walking on the water, okay, yeah, it, is it applicable a lot in what I'm doing today? No, yeah, I can, I can do it. I can put some ice down and I can walk on water too, but but in that passage, what it's talking about, why is it bringing it up, is to demonstrate who Jesus Christ is. He's in control of even nature. Nature, he's, he's, there is no such thing as scientific laws. The scientists may have, you know, wrote them down and all that, but he's in charge of maintaining them, doing them, keeping them in place, showing his faithfulness. But if he, if he steps on water, and that's what he does, is to demonstrate he's in control of that. That's how... Come, he tells him, he, I want the wind to stop. He then commands it, and it happens. So that, that's what I'm saying. We're going to insist that everything is useful. No matter what's there, it's going to teach something about uh, God or, or, or something that I need to apply. So I insist on that. And then, uh, and then the, uh, another thing that I say, uh, since Scripture is, is all sufficient to be able to do all the good works, that God has for me to do. So there's no need for new revelation. So I don't need someone to tell me God said, or I need to have um, uh, an outfit like the Watchtower um, a place to tell them, interpret it for me, or, or I need the Pope to, or a priest to pray for. I'm saying the scripture says it's here, not out here, someplace outside. So, you know, you, you, you basically extent, to that extent is how, what you need to insist to people uh, that uh, in that way, get out of trouble because that's one of the reasons people do get in trouble because they think, oh, scripture's okay. You know, it's the book, but you know, you know, I need this. I need answers for this, that, and the other thing. And, and you're telling me all you got is the book. No, the book is sufficient. 
It claims to be sufficient. Therefore, that's how, what I insist. So that's, that's kind of like uh, 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 the end of this part uh, of, of our lesson today. Uh, the, the part that I, that I haven't done, and here what I did for this, 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17 is part of an epistle. It's, uh, it's a letter. Okay? So most of the New Testament are letters. That's one of the reasons I used an epistle for our example. But actually, there's more. You know, when you look at the book, uh, the Gospels, for example, it's not a letter. It's a historical book. We look at the book of Acts, it's part of a historical book, but it's a little bit different. Transitional. It's a transitional. So we, each one of those has in parables, and I didn't talk about parables or uh, allegories. There are some allegories in the scripture, but they're limited, but there are differences. There's one that I know of. <laughs> Yeah, right, exactly. So, when, And that's where, and then prof, prophetic books. So each of those have their own sets of, of rules, I would say, or guidelines. And maybe next week we'll come back and we'll do some of those other guy of the other kinds of books. Uh, but, uh, but I think what, the good thing is we're going to do is just cover this one a little bit more. And then uh, I'll put together next week uh, a quiz on st step two, interpretation, for that, these same, this same passage. And then that way you'll be using the rules I got there because it's part of still uh, an epistle. First John 1 John 1.9, oh, those are epistles. Those are letters written to individuals or to churches. And, and so the rules that we saw here are the ones we would use for, the, for that passage too. But um, so I think we'll do that and let's see what time we got. Oh, yeah. oh man. All right. Uh, we'll stop here for this. And uh, so we'll go to First John. First John 1. Let's go to First John 1. And we're going to look at... Uh, 1 John 1, and it's uh, verse 6 and 7, okay? And we read it, and then you can remember or bring up the person, and in this case, it says, If we say that we have fellowship with him, and yet walk in darkness, we lie, and do not practice the truth. And if we walk in the light, as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Okay? So the first part is we. I mean, I'm sorry, who? who who's involved in that passage? We and he. We and he. Those are the two, the, the only two pronouns. <laughs> uh, when we say, we haven't figured out who we and he is yet, but I, I want you to understand we and he are the two two answers that I'm look, I was looking for. Why not put down him? Uh, and him. That's right. That's another one. Him. See, you almost... Uh, yeah, I didn't, so I didn't we... That. So those are the three persons in this in this uh, passage that it's talking about. But you about. only wanted us to put down one, right? Yeah, you only had to put one down. Okay. I could have put down as many as you wanted to, oh, but I, at least I, one, I said. At oh. least. Oh, uh, I thought fill out only one answer one each. Answer. Okay, yeah. So it was kind of like to make sure you got one of them at least. Okay? Now, then the next question is how? How? Right? Can we say we're talking about status or activity or means? So we're looking for verbs, so, you know, verbs of, verbs of action, because that tells me how something is done. Or maybe some nouns that kind of talk about activity, like we saw uh, preaching and teaching. Those are activities. Mm -hmm. Yet they're not a noun. They're, they're nouns, not or adjectives, or, or but not not verbs. Okay. I think so, I put down. Uh, I guess say. That's what you put down. What did I put down? Say. Right. If, you if say. we say. Right. Oh, okay. Right. If we say, that's the first one. Have oh, fellowship. Say. Okay. Have okay. fellowship. Have fellowship. So it's a having a that's fellowship. That's that's another one. Walk. But having. Have, have is another walk. word. Walk. Walk. And then walk, walk is another one. Yeah. Practice. Practice is another one. Walk, walk, walk. 
Fellowship, hold on. How about the last one? The verse 7. Verse 7. What's verse 7? Verse 7 says, but if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses, cleanses. 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 It's, another, it's another verb, right? <clears throat> it's something else that's being done, okay? Uh, now we talk about the next one is why, why? why? So oh, we're no. talking about what? why, reasons, what? Oh, I'm sorry, yeah, you're right, what? My, my eyes are going bad. <laughs> so Tell what? Tell me about it. <laughs> so the what? The what is the ideas, right? What ideas are here? Fellowship. Okay, fellowship is what an idea. What did I put down? Yep, fellowship. You fellowship. got that. Okay. Practice. Uh, practice. I just understood it was just supposed to put one. Yeah, yeah, but uh, we're going to go through all of them just to yeah. kind of get the idea you here. don't count nine wrong. Cause no, I no, it's not wrong. One. All you need is one. Exactly. That's what I asked for. Uh, let's see. We said uh, ideas. How about truth? Isn't that an idea? Truth is an idea. It isn't... Uh, uh, it's a thing, right? That's the, way, the way it's used here. When you say practice, that's a verb. That's something that's being done. So, yeah. But that's truth truth is the other one. Uh, same thing with darkness. Darkness is an idea yeah. that we need to figure out what that... The light. Uh, yeah, light is another. Why did I put down? Well, you, you put down uh, for what you put fellowship. That's good. Oh. And then... Um, I can't remember. It's been so long since I did. There's another thing one. is uh, blood. There's blood in there. Yeah. So that's another thing. And then sin. Sin is another idea. It's not, you know, you can't put it up and grab something like this and say, this is sin. <laughs> it's, but it's an idea of, of what does it mean. So sin has something uh, that we need to define also. We'll be looking at each one of these words to kind of give us, but these, this is what I'm talking about, what. And then uh, now we go to the next piece, which is why. Why? So we're talking about second first. Uh, so so here's if we say we don't fellowship, and yet walk in darkness. So the why, the reason. What that put? He put down in the light. In the light. Reason are result of our purpose well it's, it's contrasting it's contrasting two different things that we say one thing yeah but we're, we're actually doing a different thing than we're lying okay so so there there's a there there's the the, the, the why is a result and purpose so with preposition so it's uh you know, in what order to, that? in order that, you know, what kind of something that? in that order. Do we see that here at all? Is there anything like that? I, to tell you the truth, I don't see any where it's not really giving me a, a, a reason or a result. Well, well, I, except, the... except for result, I would say, I would say that we are. Well, uh, we, you know, that, that walk in darkness, we lie. So, so in the sense that there is a... A reason, a reason is implied. Right. It's not, reason, it's not, not specific. There. Only the result is. That it's we, implied. We lie. And then we walk in darkness. Those are the... Uh, or if we say we have fellowship with them and we walk in darkness, yeah, we lie. So this, these two... Well, here he says in the light. So oh, okay. no, no. Uh, I wouldn't, oh, I wouldn't, right. but that, uh, that's a purpose. or there's another one. We have fellowship. So that, that's a result. But if we walk in the light and it's either in the light, we have fellowship. Now there's it, it results that we do. Um, okay. So now we go to the next one. When? And then the other one, uh, cleanses us. So it is the sense that, uh, that the, there's a, but there's no reason, oh. there's no reason or result. It just says we, we are cleansed from all sin. So that it's a result. So the only things I see in here is not, it doesn't give you the, 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 the reason, but I think these are results that we are cleansed from all sin, that we have fellowship, that uh, we lie. 
So those are three results of what we're doing or not doing. Okay? Right? Oh, yeah. Okay, next one is the win. Next one is the win. And this is, when does this activity going on? What These verbs that are in here, are they in the past, present, or future? Present. present. Okay. Yep. That's what it, if we say, that's, that's right now. I'm saying that now. Uh, if we, we have fellowship, so that's it. Mm -hmm. And then we walk. No, we get what walk. That, what that put? You put down present. So you just put oh. down what <laughs> the time. The time is uh, present. present. So yeah, each one of these there's doesn't none of these are in the past, right? Yeah. None of these we we were or we will be. Nothing future. Nothing past. It's now. So the present is the, is the answer. The idea that I'm looking. At. What when is this happening? The tense is all present. Every one of these, right? So it isn't, right? Do you understand that, Joan? Mm -hmm. This is all present, present, yeah. present, present. Yeah. Okay? Now, we'll talk about nomic present and those other things, but it is present, every one of these. And then we see next is, Where? whoops, I'm sorry. Yes. No. When. Oh, I'm sorry. Where? where? Yep. Okay. Yeah, where? So we're looking for place or sphere. Remember I told you, a place could be physical, something, or a sphere could be, uh, and, and here we're going to see that uh, you were right the first time, and you scratched it off, <laughs> but it should be in the light. That's a, that's a, that's a sphere of darkness, or Did sphere of... scratch out in the light? In the light. In so the light, I change it to... None. <laughs> none? None, yeah. So, here, here what I would say is that, yeah, we're, we're talking about a, a sphere. We could be, um, you know, we have in, you know, in the darkness. That could, that's a location or a sphere of darkness, right? It isn't a physical place. Position. It's more of a position, right? Uh, and then we say uh, in the light is another one. We're, you know, we're position. in that position of, of being in the light. That's repeated several times. Um, And uh, so those are the two that I see here. And, uh, okay, two, three. Okay, so that's position. So that's a place. In this case, a sphere of influence. When you're in the darkness, what happens? You're blind. You're going to trip. You're going to fall apart. <laughs> uh, you're not not walking in, in, in the you know knowing where you're going, kind of a thing. Okay, and then we say extent. Extent. In here, do we see anything that talks about how much or or quality? This isn't all scripture on the other verse. Or on another the other one was all scripture, right? In this case, in in, in, in John uh, oh. uh, verse yeah. seven, it does give me a extent. Uh, 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 extent. How much uh, as a measure? Uh, how about the last phrase? Last phrase. Your son cleanses us from all sin. All, all the word, that word, all. All sin. That's all sin. sin. All sin. That's it, exactly. So it does, it does come across that it's talking about all sin, not just some sin. Um, all sin. It's everything. It's kind of talking about everything up gonna, to that point. I was going to say totality. Yeah, yeah. In, in, in first or tell it. Yeah, but but all is, yeah. is the word that's in here, and that's what I'm trying to get you to do. Is always pick um, the word that's in the in the same passage to kind of talk about when you say quantity. It's all all set. Okay, now we had a bunch of uh, questions. Uh, true false. The first one is. Oh. There is a need of biblical hermeneutics with exegesis prior to teaching, preaching or teaching. True or false? Now, hermeneutics is what we're doing. Yeah. And that prior would mean before you... Even if you don't know what hermeneutics is at that right. time. Right. Doesn't matter. <laughs> You've got to go through the process of exegesis. In other words, taking out what's there in order to properly be able to teach yeah. others. So... That's a true statement. And then during the work of observation, I have to answer the question, what 
do I have to do with what the text says? True or false? What? When I'm just in the part, you know, remember we said three steps. One is observation. Second one was uh, interpretation. And the third step was application. application. Yeah. So in, in this, in the first step, I'm saying, in the observation step, I'm going to answer the question, what do I have to do with what the text says? True or false? It's better to be false because you're right. in the observation. It is false. You're in the yeah, observation that put, stage. Not false. No, you put true. <laughs> See, because the first, before you get into interpretation and application, what do I do with what the text says? That's number three. Uh, the first step is just to see what's there. And that's where we, uh, once you get used to doing it most of the time, it, it helps you draw what's there first before coming to it automatically and saying, well, how do I use it? Read the question again. Okay. So I'll see why, it says, during the work of observation, okay. in other words, says, I have to answer the question, what do I have to do with what the text says? And that's what I'm saying. That's false because we're not to do that. We're to but just say, what does it say? Well, that's the question. What does it say? That's all. We're not. I thought that's what, what does observation it, meant. Just yeah, what, what does it say? Right. And th that's what I'm saying. And here I said, what do I have to do with what the text says? And I'm saying, no, that's the that's step. That's the question number th for the third step. I don't understand okay. that question. Okay. So and number three says, when interpreting the biblical text, we have to. Uh, look for hidden or mystical meanings in this way uh, in this way we allegorizing or spiritualizing the text true or false, false that's that. correct no, no. that's false to, we're not supposed to think about that one. okay that's false that's right and then we say Al Al would say false 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 <laughs> <laughs> exactly and then number four the general context of each verse <clears throat> is the Bible General context of each verse is the Bible. Yes. Yeah, true. That's true. Because you're not to... Uh, it's not... It not, doesn't stand alone. It doesn't stand alone. It's got, it's got to fit with all of the whole Bible. It can't be this passage says one thing and then it says something different or something opposite in another passage. That doesn't, doesn't happen. <clears throat> and then we see here, in order to understand the meaning of God's Word... A person must be born again. True or false? I say true, but I yep. listened to a preacher the other day, and he said it was false. No. He was talking about, he said, do you remember who that was? He said, I understood the Bible before I was saved. Well, well superficially. Yeah. Superficially. That's what I'm saying. They, they can understand words. They can even know the Greek, the Hebrew, yeah. all of that. Yeah. But the significance is going to be missing. Remember, yeah. that's what we said. The Once a person... Uh, may understand a lot of concepts, but not the impact. Because if it were, if they didn't understand, no, they I, would turn around and be able to be saved. Then I they'll read be saved. The Bible and I studied and I went to church yeah. periodically yeah. growing up. But and I, if anyone asked me if I was a Christian, I'd have said yes yeah. until I really got saved. Yeah. And then I knew the difference. Okay, <laughs> and that, that's an, that's that's the idea. Where, <clears throat> and then we have. Um, uh, the study of historical context uh, of the Bible includes recognition of the doctrine of dispensation. What's the difference between number five and six? Yeah, they're yeah. the same. That's why what... That's what I skipped it. It's the same. Okay. But I was just testing you. <laughs> <laughs> dispensation is that is rightly dividing the Word of God. Exactly. True. Do you ever okay. listen to this? Oh, we're on the air. No, no problem. And then we have the, in the Old, Test, Old Testament, God recognizes three classes of men, Jews, Gentiles, and the church. Not in the Old Testament. Not in the Old Testament. Exactly. In the Old Testament is Jews and Gentiles. Gentiles. Those are the only two. Well, the church doesn't, yeah, you got it. it okay. uh, uh, yeah, I knew the church was New Testament, but I thought I might have right. read it. Yeah, the New Testament, we're talking about the, uh, in the Gospels, it's only talking about future in the I will build my church and the book of Acts is where we start seeing the building of the church and then, but, uh, so there and then you Paul go. takes over he's the father <laughs> to the Gentiles exactly and then God is father of all the descendants of Adam I said false 
Yeah. Okay. Why do you say that? Because God is not the Father at all. Right. That's right. No, as a matter of fact, Jesus Himself talks to some of the some of the Pharisees. Your Father is the devil. <laughs> So he, they're unbelievers. They're they're still in relationship with with, with Satan in some cases. Okay, true true story. And then the method, which includes grammatical, historical, and theological perspectives, results in the correct interpretation. True. It should. <laughs> should. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. It should. But it's, uh, uh, it's, but sometimes you just have to. Have faith that the Holy Spirit is trying to show you something. Well, I mean, what well, I'm saying saying grammatically, you can't escape that. In other words, I can't take a passage and then take it out of this grammatical context and say, I know what this means. The Holy Spirit is not going to do that. He's going to say, it's going to be grammatically, logically correct. Mm -hmm. Same thing with historical. If it says that Jesus rose from the dead, it's going to be an historical event. Many of the things that are written in there are specifically stated to say this actually happened. Jesus did resurrect. And if he didn't resurrect, then our whole faith that is useless. <laughs> right, exactly. Theological has to do with make sure that I've got everything properly aligned. If I, if I don't... Horizontal. Yeah, exactly. Vertical. And vertical. I would say grammatical, historical, and contextual. Yeah, well, yeah. That, okay. So, uh, okay, who's on First John 6, uh, chapter 1, verses 6 and 7. Are there words or phrases that need explanation? Uh, okay. Are there I, any more? I would say yes. Okay, which ones? Well, walking in the light. What okay. Is, what does that so, mean? Exactly. So walking in, walking so, in darkness, what does that mean? Exactly. Okay, so those are two... Of, uh, because light has several meanings, right? Sometimes we're talking about physical light. Sometimes we're talking, or the same thing with darkness. We even can't, even practicing the truth. Practicing the truth. What? Yeah. What truth? What, you know, in that sense. So there's there are words that truth there. Okay. What other things? Fellowship. Fellowship is another word that needs some explanation. Because again, what well, got put? None. <laughs> but that's just it. There should be. What do we mean by fellowship? You know, uh, Are there know, words or phrases, phrases that need explanation? And we, I put no. Not none. Yeah, he said. Well, I I understood them all. Okay, so I mean, we'll you, we'll you get understood, to, but yeah. But if you were explaining that verse to someone else, what do you mean by darkness? Well, he's talking to me. Well, yeah, yeah. No, so the, those are the I those are the kind of things we need. It need additional additional work. It isn't it isn't as clear. It isn't clear because every one of those words, darkness, light, uh, fellowship, have even, different even meanings. Cleanses. Yeah, cleanses you. Yeah, exactly. You know. Well, and I that, always talk about me, and I understood that verse. Okay. Okay. So that, that um, you know, we're saying th th those are words that we'll probably need to do a little bit more work. And then, are there theological words, person centered or God? Centered. In other words, uh, I would say there's a lot of theological words. Okay, which ones? Well, his son cleanses us from all. His things. son. So that that has to do with the what God. What that put? Walking in the light. Are there? And so there is. Yeah. Is God centered? Okay. So he is in the light. So that would be that's yeah. centered in God. The light has to do something with God. Uh, so that's good. Um, then you have to understand. And then the fellowship. In other words, were we talking about fellowship between us, or were we talking about fellowship between us and God? It says fellowship with one another. It, well, yeah. yes. well, 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 one well. another. In other words, is that the other is other people, or is that with God? You follow what I'm saying? Both. Yeah. Okay, well, that, that's. I always say vertical and horizontal. Okay, well, then that's, the those are the kind of it things. It starts off with fellowship with Him. Yes. Yes. Did I get so, that one? Uh, well, the, you you put down walking in the light as okay. a theological words, yeah. and then that's, in that's the light, a, that's a as he is phrase. as he is in the light, yeah. he is in the light. That would be God centered, uh, because that's that's key, right? And then, uh, as I said, we have to find out find out who's he talking to uh, uh, when it says one another. Are we talking about plural or? 
singular. So those are important things. And then we see number three says, are there things that are similar in comparison, illustrations or parallelism? And then, walk in the light or walk in darkness. Okay, there you go. Those are two. They're, those aren't similar. Well, they're, they're, they're comparison, comparison, parallel. They're oh. Walk in the light. Walk in, so it's a, uh, from that, uh, from, uh, okay, and the other, number four is going to be contrast. But the idea okay. of comparison, we're, it's comparing something about either in fellowship, walking in darkness, and then, or, and, or practicing the truth. So those are, those are things that are what I would call uh, illustrations. Uh, the illustration is the walking in the light. Or fellowship uh, with him and fellowship with one another. Right, so that, that has to do with some, uh, what I'm saying, uh, the, in this case, the illustration is the light and darkness. Those are illustrations that, we, that we're going to be looking at. Okay, and the comparison, right? Because it is, it is comparing. If we walk in the light, then we do have fellowship. Though that's comparison, two different things. That's, that's putting it together. And then we, then we see the, the next, the number four. Uh oh, oh there it is. Says and are the things that are different, and in oh, this yes. case that are contrast. Yeah. We would say, yeah, there's darkness contrast. Right? Right. Walk, walking in darkness versus oh. walking in the light. So there's a, and then, uh, <clears throat> and then the contrast. Uh, is another thing else? Anything else? Are there, are, are, are there anything else? It says we lie and do not the truth. I okay, that's saying. that's that's a. When you put no up here. Well, again, this was for Second Timothy three sixteen and seventeen. That's Remember, right. I'm just using the questions and uh, oh, what we're looking for. Remember, okay. that's but you're right. That's just an example. Right. So now we're gonna now we're going through this passage, and it says, okay, the contrast. So we are we do have some contrast. This uh, walking yes. light, walking darkness. Okay. Are there contrasts? Yes. Yes. That's the answer. Okay, that's the answer. And then num number five, uh, uh, we're gonna see words that are repeated in here. Light. Yes. Light is repeated. Good. Fellowship is repeated, yeah. Say, if we say. Okay. Uh, that's only once here, say. Oh, I thought it was if we say this, if we say that. No. Okay. And then walk, right? Walk is uh, repeated. repeated a lot. So, yeah, walk is, so uh, now here, that's where we're going to, that's a word that we have to figure out. What do you mean by walk? You know, I'm walking right now. Is that what it's referring to, or is there something else? That's what I'm saying. Whenever you see a word that has multiple meanings, we have to select of those which ones in the context. Okay? Um, and then we said that the, the, the words that are repeated is walk. That's a lot there. And, and light. Okay? Next, number six, are the words that imply cause and effect. Yes. yes. Okay. What, which one is that? If we do such and such, then such and such. Okay. <laughs> so if we walk in darkness, right? Yeah. Uh, it says, it, it, says, darkness, it, it says, we can say this, but yet walk in darkness, then we lie. So that's kind of like... Uh, um, that's the effect. That's the effect. We actually, and that's what we have there. So we do the first part. The second part is, and then we don't practice the truth. So those are two results. We lie and do not practice. So one says, by a negative sense, we in the, or in a positive sense, we're saying we are lying. And then the, on the negative sense, we do not practice the truth. It's the same thing, but we got two. The next verse is a positive. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, so, those are the things that we can talk about. Um, all right. And uh, the, now here it talks about. Here it says, if we walk in the light. So that's the one part. But then we also have, at the end, he says, the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sins. So is that, is that uh, by walking in the light, I'm 
cleansed. I'm being. I'm. That's another. Either. Either they're they're connected as a, result, so, as a result, or that uh, we get cleansed, or somehow that we are cleansed. Okay. And then number seven. Let's go to number seven. Is is there indication of progression? Indication of progression. Oops. That's telling me the bad news is we're going to be done. Um, yes, there, yes. Is, there is a progression. You okay. No. What's, what, well, again, you're, that's you're, an example. Example. Oh. Just, in this case, you're saying, is there progression? I we're, said yes. We're, okay, what, what's the progression? Tell me. I don't remember. <laughs> if we, we have uh, fellowship. If yeah. we, if we, we have we fellowship or we're cleansed, cleansed, we're cleansed, cleansed from, from all, all sin. sin. We're cleansed from all sin. So there is a progression. This is yeah. going from walking in light and then we, the cleansing of, of the sin is, is going on. So, okay. And then, are there connecting words? Yes. Oops, I'm sorry. Did you skip? You skip yeah. Number eight. number number eight. Are there question and answers in this case? Not really no, question. there's no question or answers in this passage, right? Yeah. So, okay. Well, I put Nothing. Down. You put down yes because that's not a there's no. Remember, I'm looking for a question mark, and we don't have are question there mark. questions. I have questions. I thought the question was, if we do such and such. Well, there's the, the, not a, what I'm saying in the passage itself doesn't have a question mark, so oh, we don't have. Okay. A, and then there are some where we'll have the answer, where Paul, for example, says, speaking about marriage, and let me tell you. And so it's kind of an answer to a question. Have question marks. No, there's no question. <laughs> right. But in this case, I'm talking in English, we, we put the question mark to say there is a question. So there is no question. And then we have number nine. Are there uh, connecting words? Yes. yes. Okay. And. And. Yep. And. 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 and, and, and. and. Many, yeah. many things here is connecting. Um, so if is in there. But. But is another one. Like in yeah. verse seven. It says, but if we walk in the light. So there's. There's a connection between the two, if, the two verses, right? The two verses are connected by this but if. Okay, uh, and then we have the next uh, next three. There's going to be. Are there orders to follow or comply with? Implied. There's no right. There's nothing in imperative mood. That those are verbs that says do this or do that. You know, there's nothing I like. Uh, yes, you said yes. Walk in the light. Oh, okay. But there is no no command no here, nothing like you know some of the other passages. Where this is love one another. That's a command, you know. That's you know, implied. What you should do. Implied in that sense. Okay, and then so, but that's kind of like the uh, interpretation, and and that's the next step. Right. <laughs> okay. Are there any promises? Cleanses us yes. from all sin. No, there's no promises. Nothing that says if we do this, then. We are cleansed. In other words, it doesn't say, it, in other words, there's no promise like, uh, if you pray in my name, I will, you know, give you this. There, if you walk in the light. Well, those are it. But again, but, that's not a, not a promise. In other words, God yeah. isn't speaking and says, I promise you that, that uh, it's right there is condition. If you do this, then do that. that so it's, Which if is that? In the this, this is probably the, the first one. The one, the if. It's a Sense. possibility. It's still a, it's up to your volition. There's will. But we'll check that out. But that's a good question. A, I was taking a, another if. Okay. <laughs> right. It does say if we walk in the light, we will have fellowship. Okay. So but hold on. It says if we walk in the light, it's he in light. We have. Now those are, that just says this is what happened. It's more of a... It's There's two condi conditions. It's conditional. It's conditional if. That, that, that's all it's doing. It isn't promising anything yet. Now, we're going to find in verse 9, that is. I mean, that, we can see that a little bit better. But here, it's not. It, it just says these are two possibilities. And that's all. Okay. And then, uh, is there any words to be taken in figurative sense? Figurative sense. Yes. Okay. Which ones? Walk in the light. Light, okay. That, that's in a that's figure. Not it isn't a physical light in a sense, right? Darkness. Darkness is another another thing that I say. Good, good. And uh, how about blood? 
Are we talking about the vein that comes, the blood that comes out of Jesus Christ that, on the cross? So, and again, that's a figurative work on the cross. Exactly, figurative sense. Exactly. Okay. So now, that's that's what we were talking about in this quiz. It's basically all we've done. It says what's there. We haven't interpreted yet. We haven't gotten to that step, and that'll be next week when I come in with the next quiz. It'll just It's hard though. Yep. When you've been in the word so many years. Yep. To go back and try to get back to such a level that you can't <laughs> you, you jump ahead. Yep. No, I ahead. and that's that's uh, one of the one of the things that we we assume we know what's there. You follow us in and that's what we're trying to do now is kind of step back a little bit more and says, okay, Not suppose it, I'm teaching so I want them to understand and see it so I'm not going to give them all the answers I want them you know to, to be able to see it that's in the scripture not my my interpretation yet so here in this case all, all we're doing and yeah it is difficult because as you said it's something that we're not used to so let's pray let's pray father we come before you give you thanks for this time you've given us we pray that you might continue to work in our hearts and minds Enlighten us, make clear to us your word so that we can apply it in our lives and also speak to others in a way that brings you glory and honor. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.